Hi there, I'm Jenny. And I'm Kevin. And we're from In Christ in Schools. You might recognise us. Um, you might be surprised to see us here at QE, but we are here um, because we run some clubs here as well, don't we, and support mm -hmm. the students. Yep, and uh, so if you're interested in um, the things we talk about or you need any additional support, then uh, the ALF Club, uh, once it starts up again, uh, when the school allows us to do so, is available to, uh, to all students. Um, so, Jenny, what are, we, uh, what are we looking at today wow. in our collective uh, worship assembly? Well, there's a bit, of, a bit of a clue right here on the board. Oh, right, the nativity. Yes, because it's that time of year, Kevin. Yes, we, we all do it every year, and don't we? Don't we tend to know, know all, all about it anyway? Do we have to go over it again? Wow, well, I think it's such a great story, you know, Jesus coming to earth. And we see glimpses of it on Christmas cards, we hear about it in school plays, Christmas songs. Hollywood. Hollywood, you know, so why not tell it again? Okay, do you mind if I critique it for you? Um, sure, you can critique away. Okay, cool. Right, I've got some uh, ticks and some crosses. Let's hope you get more ticks and I've got crosses. some drawings along the way as well. All right, your own work? Um, not my own work, but my husband's work. Okay, so away so we can't go. can't critique that. Okay, away we go. <laughs> okay, so... In December, Mary and Joseph go from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Um, Mary is very heavily pregnant and they're riding on a donkey. Um, it was a long... Wait, wait, can I just stop you there? Um, it probably wasn't December. Um, we know from our calendar and the fact that the events that are described in the telling of the story uh, would mean it would be somewhere around about the end of September. Oh. So, no, it, it, was, it would have been, been September-ish time, certainly not December. Oh, oh and also, before you carry on, uh, there's no mention of any donkey. <sighs> You're kidding me. I'm not. There's absolutely no mention of any donkey in this story. There are donkeys in the Bible, but not at this point. Oh, That's wow. not to say that nobody lent her a donkey, but um, we can't find any, uh, any source to um, say that that particular uh, event happened. Sorry. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to put a, uh, a cross against that part oh. of the story. But we move on. Yeah, okay, let's move on. I got that part of the story wrong, apparently. It's not what the Bible says. Anyway, they arrive at Bethlehem to find somewhere to stay. But unfortunately, there was no room at the inn for them. We, we say inn, uh, but mm, not sure. Uh, it, you got to remember that uh, Joseph was there um, because of a census that was taking place. And he was probably going to visit the family home, and so the rest of his family would have been there as well. So it's probably a mis mistranslation in the word in, in, in the actual Greek, uh, but it was certainly somewhere that would have been very quiet uh, that they were given, um, because obviously Mary was pregnant. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I've learned something else there as well. But I, I, I'm going to give you a tick there, okay. because you were right, the Bible does say that uh, there was no room at the inn, um, but if we just research a bit further, we can um, try and understand uh, what um, what that part of the, the story truly means. Okay, excellent, I got a tick. Okay, so moving on with the story. Mary and Joseph are in their quiet place and Mary gives birth to a baby boy called Jesus and she wraps him in swaddling cloths and places him into a manger. What's, what's, what's swaddling cloths? Yes, I'm glad you asked that actually, because swaddling cloths were strips of fabric that were tied together and often they were used by shepherds to wrap baby lambs um, in so that they, would, um, they wouldn't break any limbs or anything because they were actually going to be used as um, sacrifices in the temple so they had to be perfect. That's interesting how um, even at this early stage we're, we're starting to talk about sacrifice. Hmm, so I'm, I'm going to give you another tick for that one. Brilliant. So, uh, we're doing well. Great. Well, you are doing well, I should say. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. So, shepherds are in their fields watching their flocks, um, and an angel appears to them and tells them that baby Jesus has been born and that they should go to Bethlehem and visit him. And so they do. And this, again, is um, a pointer to the fact that uh, shepherds in their fields at night um, now... Israel is a warm country, 
but at night it's cold, especially in December. Uh, and so this gives us another indication that it wouldn't have been December when uh, Jesus was actually born. Uh, shall I give you a tick for that? Oh, yes, please. Excellent. There we go. Well done. Oh, we've got more ticks and crosses now. We have. Aha! My favourite part of the story because it involves gifts. And um, there were some three kings that followed a star who came to visit baby Jesus and they brought with them some gifts to offer him. I'm starting to struggle, Jenny, to be honest. Why? Well, I get the, the gifts thing, you know, bling for the king and all that. All right. But the Bible doesn't say how many uh, wise men there were. Okay. Um, they were very, very clever men. Right. Uh, they, were, they were astrologers. They knew the scriptures that had already been written. Um, and so they, too, were looking out for this, uh, this Messiah, this chosen one who uh, was coming to save uh, the world. Now... Like I said, we don't know how many they were. We can assume, I suppose, there was three, because there's was three gifts. And it probably would have been a little bit hmm, rude to turn up to some kind of celebration without a gift. Uh, but we don't know for definite. Um, and you said baby. Um, well, Herod felt threatened, because they visited Herod initially to find out where this newborn king was. And because Herod was threatened... Um, he secretly devised a plan that when he knew the whereabouts of the newborn king, that he would want to come and pay homage himself. But that wasn't his real plan. He wanted this uh, threat to his throne uh, done away with. And so what he did, he actually uh, put out a, a rule that all baby boys under the age of two be killed in and around Bethlehem. And the Bible talks about Jesus at this point in the terms of a child rather than a baby. Wow. So it can be safely um, assumed that the kings or the wise men um, would have visited Jesus um, sometime after his birth. Okay. Well, I really am learning something new here. I'm sorry, but for that one, I'm going to have to give you um, a cross again. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, what if I tell you what the gifts were? Maybe I could... Uh... Get another, okay. another yep. um, point back for myself. They, um, they, they bought to offer Jesus gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That's interesting, isn't it? I, mean, I don't know what, what you want for your birthday, but uh, I've always fancied a bit of, um, bit of um, myrrh for my birthday. <laughs> Have you? Myrrh. Well, it makes no frankincense to me. That's just not funny. Anyway. Merving on, um, don't get too disheartened okay. um, with the fact that you've got a few uh, crosses uh, because you have to remember that um, the reason Jesus came. And um, if we just turn this cross just slightly that way, you know, the cross would become quite an important thing in the life of Jesus some, some years later. Not the cross itself, but what Jesus did on the cross. And so, your understanding of the story is quite, quite accurate in today's society. Mm. But why do you think our understanding is slightly different to what the Bible says? Mm. Well, I think our understanding is always changing, isn't it? And we're always looking to other things and other sources to grasp understanding. We listen to songs and what society tells us and we look at Christmas cards and we think we understand what Christmas is all about. But really, we need to update our, our um, understanding of the Bible. That's true. You know, society's uh, thoughts, ideas change uh, throughout time. But the Bible is constant. The Bible has never changed. The stories in the Bible have never changed. They've remained consistent. Uh, throughout time. And we really, as Jenny said, uh, need to um, get to know uh, these, tr these stories in the, in the true uh, way they were told. Uh, so I hope you've learned something, Jen, by me uh, critiquing it. Uh, and um, always point to the cross, okay. uh, the cross on which uh, Jesus eventually died. But that was, comes back to the term of the sacrifice that we looked at earlier in the story. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And uh, we hope to see you soon um, 
uh, once the clubs start back uh, in the new year, hopefully. God bless you. And Merry Christmas. Well, hello, my name's Mr Rodriguez and I'm the chaplain here at Queen Elizabeth's Academy. And it's great to have that message of Christmas, that message of the nativity, that core story at Christmas time, brought to us from Kevin and Jenny from In Christ in Schools. And what a great thing to be reminded of, that the Bible has not changed, that that nativity message has been the same for, well, 2,000 years. But sometimes we need to update our understanding. We need to gain knowledge and wisdom that actually is not based on Christmas cards and it's not based on songs, but it goes right back to the original sources of the Bible. So it's fantastic to hear that message. And I just want to pick up on that point that they ended with, that this amazing life that Jesus led, that had this incredibly humble beginning in a stable, it had some amazing future to it, that Jesus didn't stay as a child, that he grew up, and he grew up showing knowledge and wisdom. He did things that pleased his Father in heaven. He taught amazing things. He performed amazing miracles. But I would say the greatest thing, the greatest gift that we can think about this Christmas is not only that God gave us his son and that wonderful manger scene, that wonderful nativity scene, but that Jesus grew up and he did something amazing. He gave us a gift. And as Kevin and Jenny uh, brought out there and made mention of, Jesus would eventually give his life for the whole world so that anybody that wants to have the knowledge and wisdom of God and connect with God and have a relationship with God through Jesus can do and they can do it for free through that free gift from Jesus and I wonder what character in the story we will be like will we be like Herod or will we be like um, the wise men will we be like uh, Joseph and, and Mary and the other people or will we be like the shepherds in other words will we make room for Jesus? Will we make room for him in our lives? Will we make room for him in our hearts? And I want to leave you with a prayer that's been written by some students at our academy. This prayer was written by the community. It's written for the community. And we all want to say from us at Queen Elizabeth's Academy, from In Christ in Schools, and from the children and the students that have made this prayer, God bless you this Christmas and have a Merry Christmas. A Christmas prayer from the community and for the community. And be joy for goodness and togetherness. Dear God, we pray for you to help our world this Christmas. Show your empathy to all the people in it. Whether young or old, big or small, the regretful, the lonely and the broken hearted. May joy and peace come to all equally. Reveal your fatherly love and help those in need. We pray for the daily bread for the many and not for the few. We pray for the hopeless and the hopeful that all will be filled. Thank you for the hope and the joy of your gift to us, your son Jesus, whose birth we celebrate, whose life we look to. Thank you for his love and forgiveness shown on the cross. Father God, you are caring. We pray for your love and provision for our homes this Christmas, for the togetherness of families with friends, and that this will be possible and our homes will make peaceful. Thank you. Thank you for Jesus who makes peace between God and mankind. We pray for joy in, to, to the world.